the Drake Buccaneer. It's a rough and tumble fighter and can be maintained in the worst of conditions in order to keep real working space crews alive. It is designed to maneuver and fight above its weight class and complement the Cutlass and Caterpillar system. What you have in front of you, folks, is the glass cannon of Star Citizen and one of the coolest ships I've ever flown, the Drake Buccaneer. Let's roll the intro. All right, guys. So in front of us is the Drake Buccaneer. When uh, when Drake Interplanetary set about developing a dedicated fighter, they didn't do it in a vacuum. They wanted a ship that could work alongside the, their entire lineup. The newest entry to the Drake catalog is an agile scrapper, something intended to take hits without breaking, breaking the bank on repairs and maintenance needs. The Buccaneer also needed to provide ample support to either the Cutlass or the Caterpillar, while also having the range of travel to safely cover a Herald. To meet these goals, the engineer at Drake opted for a single-seat maneuverable fighter built expressly for combat, with plenty of capacity to alter its loadout to, to quickly move between close-range fire support and long-range escort. A purpose-built ship, the Buccaneer is ready to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other fighter in its, in its class, at its size. So here we go as we near the front of the Drake Buccaneer. Look at that profile. I mean, I know Drake is, you know, the pirate company, but that thing just, it screams badassery. <laughs> it screams kind of piratey, you know? Um... What a fun, cool ship. And it is beautiful. That, that thing is sexy. I love the way the wings are designed with those big engines sitting on top of the wings. So this is the nose looking straight forward in here with a completely uh, transparent glass canopy. And they even have these like uh, glass kind of panels on the bottom, which I'm not sure why those are there because... You can't see through them. Anyway, it is a tripod landing gear setup uh, with without wheels. Uh, as you can kind of see as we walk around the starboard side here, at the very top is uh, my size 4 Revenant. Uh, that thing is quite the monster uh, <laughs> when it comes to a Gatling gun. And a ship this small and this maneuverable to have a big size 4 gun, it, it says a lot. Um, I love the marking. The Drake Interplanetary marking up there. You can see my my big attrition weapon up there as the sandstorm, of course, kicks up right when I'm doing my video. Um, we can see the intake ports here on the side and uh, the, the keep clear marker. The big engine and the big intake uh, for the for the Buccaneer. A uh, couple size two missiles on this side. Um, I have one uh, cross section and one. Uh, EM missile up there, and it's the same on the other side. This is a completely symmetrical ship. And then as you can see right there on the wingtip is my, uh, my size, I think it's a size one, uh, GT210, I, I believe it is. Um, my little, my little yellow jacket, I think it is. And, you know, that part of the wing actually breaks off. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, if we lose that, I'm still okay. And my favorite part of the Buccaneer is really the backside of the Buccaneer because of the way the engines are designed. And you can kind of see here where there's like some vertical and uh, some stabilizers here in the back. Once one day when we have movable surfaces, those things will actually, uh, they're, I'm sorry, those are horizontal stabilizers. They will be the main pitch point and the roll point for this ship. Um, but it does look like we may have some kind of a... Uh, uh, movable aileron and, and some kind of a trailing edge flap there as well um, at some point in time. We'll see. Um, okay, uh, we can see where the landing gear folds up into the back. That's kind of an awesome design. But the best thing about the Buccaneer is the engines. And 
these uh, w- with the with the variable exhaust nozzle here as it squeezes using the Bernoulli effect to get more thrust. The spacing in between the ind- individual VIN uh, fins there. It, it's an awesome design. It reminds me of a modern day fighter, and it's it's just cool. And, and the colors here with the with the, the basically the stainless steel and the aluminum and all that. It just looks fantastic, and it flies really well. As we come around the port side, we can see that uh, it is mirrored to the starboard side um, with the missiles and the gun. And, and even my attrition over here. So let's uh, let's let's do us ourselves a favor here. Let's hop in this uh, ship and take it for a test drive around Daymar. All right. So as we enter our ship here, very nice, very cool. I'm gonna take a look around before we start her up. See, from this angle, it's very, very black. A lot of steel, stainless steel and stuff. I mean, you can tell the the weathering effects on this ship are really, really good. And it looks like it's worn. And it looks like it's used. And it just, it's really, really good. And from, uh, from the front, it looks pretty mean. And even, I mean, from the side profile, it's a very short, very, it's, it's just a lot of firepower in this, in this package here. And uh, with that big size four revenant on top, this thing does pack quite the punch. So let's get it started. Boom, that was like super loud because it all happened at once. But as we build up our shields here, let's take a look around the cockpit before we start flying. So a lot of glass in this cockpit. Uh, it is a fighter. It is a light fighter. So a lot of forward glass, a lot of side glass, a lot of up, you know, glass on top here, and that's really good because you have pretty good visibility, and the struts uh, around here are, are shaped fairly well. I can't wait to see the new UI on the uh, on the Drake ships that's coming out. Uh, as we look around the cockpit here. Um, let's see. There's a power button right here. Uh, there's a engineering button to spool the quantum drive engine on and off. We have four multi-function displays with a 2D radar in the center. To the right-hand side, there's a bunch of switches and circuit breakers over here. They don't do anything, and, and the of course, the compass doesn't do anything. Neither does the comms. Um, on the left side, with this canopy button here, we can open the canopy, the ladder... Uh, and press to unlock is on here as well. And then there is a throttle over here. Uh, I think it looks really cool with this with this new armor, uh, the leather type of armor. Uh, looks pretty neat. And of course, it's a Drake ship, so there is no ejection. You go down with your ship. And so, yeah, that's that's actually about it for uh, the Bucks controls. Let's take a look out the back. Look at those engines and, and the fire coming from those engines. They're going to look even better once we take off. Let's go ahead and t initially take off and let's uh, retract the landing gear. Isn't that cool? That, that's a really nice, smooth, fast animation. And uh, so let's let's get a little look at that. Look at those vents get pushed in. And this is just SCM speed. Then they then they expand out because we're already at our cruising speed. Oh, man, just looks really cool. Let's let's see some afterburner on there. Yeah, looks even better at night too. Yeah, they open up, and this thing is hauling butt. Um, shoot some weapons. Those are the guns, and then the lasers. So all in all, looks really really good. Uh, I'll crank the engines back a little bit. And let's give it a good, uh, let's back up the camera, give it a good roll. The roll rate is actually really good for this type of fighter. Very agile. Let's give it a roll and we'll hold down here. Pretty good. Pretty good radius of turning for like a minimum radius turn. Let's check the yaw rate. 
pretty good. I, I have, but you know, I'm using the mouse right now, so I turned a little bit, but let's do a 180 here and watch the engines catch up. All right, they caught up fairly quick. Let's uh, let's get let's check the pitch. The pitch is where this thing really shines. Very nice for this size of ship. So let's let's head back into the cockpit. All right, looks really good. Let's uh, so we're about five hundred feet. Or I'm sorry, five hundred meters for you metric types. Uh, looks like about five. What's our cruising speed here? It just keeps going up. Oh, no, there it is. All right, so 206. 206 meters a second for our cruising speed. Let's head out into space and uh, we'll, we'll check out like, how fast this guy can go. I'm going to set it to the max throttle as we leave. And now we're leaving the atmosphere of a moon, so it's going to be a little bit faster traveling out into space. But uh, you hear that? We It's kind of a crazy sound as it's pushing. Those are the engines just pushing all the way forward. So as we climb out here, we're at uh, about 1316 for its max speed, max velocity. And it's, man, the ship is, it's it's such a cool ship. I mean, we're definitely got a great view of Daymar there uh, with the Buccaneer. Look at that. That does look really, really good. A little, bit of, a little bit of engines on there. It, it It's one of the ships, like a lot of the ships don't look like they're space fighters. But the buck definitely looks like it's a space fighter. See, there's the afterburner right there. Man, great looking ship. All right, so I guess that's enough of flying this thing around and showing her off. Let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll find a. It's a fighter, so let's go do a fighter mission, and we'll have fun doing that. And I'll catch up with you when we're at that mission, um, and then we'll go over some of the other stuff about the Drake Buccaneer. Stay tuned. Before I fly away, I forgot to mention some things about the Buccaneer. Um, I guess the basic stats for it. It is an interdiction fighter. Size is small. The crew is one. It has a cargo capacity of zero SCU. Uh, this is an older ship. It was introduced in Alpha 2.6.2. Uh, the cost for this ship in game is about 1.4 million Alpha UBC. And you can rent it for about 28,000 Alpha UBC uh, or 11,000 rec for one day. The insurance claim time is about 10 minutes, 48 seconds. Uh, exped expedite is uh, oh, just under two minutes at 148, and it costs 2700 to expedite. Um, there, You can buy the ship from, in real money. It, it is time-limited sales. It's not always on sale. And it goes for $110, which is actually the original price of it uh, to start with. Um so uh, you can buy this at New Deal uh, in Lordville, and uh, there we go. So there's some information on the Drake Buccaneer. So we'll see you at the combat mission. All right, guys, we are approaching our target. This is a very high risk target mission. Um, Buck should be able to handle it with no problem, especially with that big rev that up there. Uh, we are cruising pretty quick to get to it. I don't usually fight this uh that kind of speed go a little bit under there he is what do we got we got an anvil hurricane i'm gonna lock him up with some missiles let's see what happens oh his friends are already here Ooh, softened him up yeah very that hurricane is moving. Boom! See ya, homie. 
All right, next one up, Aegis Saber. Hey, whoa, that guy went quick. All right, let's put some missiles on this Hornet. Come on. Let's see what happens. Oh, they don't want to shoot. Probably because he turned towards me. Okay. I want to kill you with missiles, buddy. All right, there they go. My cross sections, get them. Boom! Shaka laka. All right, guys, that was a really, really quick, uh, uh, very high risk target. Um, I know there was no Valkyrie in this one, but man, this ship can, uh, it can certainly fly. Uh, tons of firepower. Look at that. This thing is, is just, if you can outmaneuver your opponents, it is just a monster of a ship. Just a monster. What a cool visual. All right, guys. So next up in the video is the loadout. And then uh, we actually have a commercial for the video, believe it or not. Um, yeah. And then there's not much else to it. I'll, I'll give some final thoughts. Um, and then that'll wrap up the video. Uh, so... Uh, please stay tuned, and uh, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button down on the video if uh, you're enjoying this content so far. And I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next segment. Uh, we're not going to skip out on the third-person dogfighting. That's still going to happen. So thanks for watching, guys. All right, folks, guess what time of the video it is? It is time to do the DPS calculator at Urkel.Games. And this is for the Drake Buccaneer, Fist 25 coming at you. So let's take a look at the base stats for the Buccaneer here. We can see uh, it is light fighter combat, ship size two, hull hit points 5,580. So pretty low on the hit point scale. Uh, as I mentioned, it was a glass cannon earlier. Uh, that That is true. <laughs> It's a glass cannon. Um, it, it's fairly small ship in its dimensions. Its mass is about 40,000 and a half kilograms. Uh, SEM speed 210, afterburner speed 1317. The pitch and the yaw, pitch is 65 degrees, which is pretty darn good. Uh, not as fast as some ships, obviously. The yaw is set, uh, 62, which is actually fairly good. The ship feels good when I fly it. It feels very maneuverable for, for a light fighter. Uh, the roll is 165 degrees a second. Uh, we saw that. It's pretty good. Uh, hydrogen capacity is standard. Quantum fuel capacity is standard. Um, so with that, uh, let's take a look at the DPS. Right now, it is 1,978 with 255 alpha damage. Um, because this light fighter does tend to get in close and stuff. Um, so with this DPS, as you look at our loadout here, this is a really, really good stock loadout. Like, I'm only going to change two things. And even then, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, I'm going to get rid of the CF337 Panthers and go up to uh, Attrition 3s. So our DPS of 1978 um, is going to go up. You, let's see here up to 2331 once those attritions are heated up and it doesn't take that long to heat them up uh to 700 uh, you just got fired a little while um but that's a significant damage boost um just by switching the attritions i would definitely leave these ballistics on here the yellow jacket i would leave the revenants on here and here's the thing since the revenant here is fixed and the uh, the attritions here are fixed size threes. The revenants are fixed size four. I wouldn't necessarily, even though you can gimbal these GT two tens. I wouldn't. You just leave everything fixed, and that way you don't even have to worry about changing your gimbal mode. It stays in in lock mode, and that's all you have. And it'll fire just straight ahead, and that seems to work the best for uh, this type of ship. Um, and as you as you'll see in the third person video and and in my first person stuff, 
uh, made very short work out of the competition there. Even Valkyries went down real fast, and that's due to this Revenant uh, Ballistic Gatling. The ship also does very well if you throw on some distortion repeaters, size ones, on these fixed size ones. It just it just chews, chews people up, spits them out. Okay, let's talk about missiles. The uh, come stock with Tempest 2 and Ignite 2, so cross-section and um, infrared. Very good loadout. You, you don't even have to change it at all. Um, but what I do is I change out these Ignite 2s um, and I put on Dominator 2s, um, which I like, the, I like the EM. It's actually the same damage, but I prefer the EM. So missile damage, uh, four missiles, we're looking at 14,990. And I do leave this cross-section Tempest 2 on there. Now for shields, we have 7,200 hit points in our shields with a full charge in 22 seconds. Those are civilian grade C web shields. No good. Let's do the standard shield loadout. One palisade. That, <laughs> that bumps some stuff up. And then we'll go to military and FR-66 uh, to keep our recharge rate fairly high. And now uh, 14,040 hit points uh, with a full charge in 33 seconds. That's uh, that's, that's pretty significant. Um a boost from what we have with the web. Um, so this definitely gets us some higher, sh higher shields. Uh, it's a little bit longer recharge, but it, I don't, th I think it's negligible. Uh, now the power plant, um, it says it comes stock here with a JS 300. I don't think that's actually accurate, but regardless, uh, JS 300 is what's going to go on there for me. Um, that keeps our power just at halfway, which is, I, I can't ask for, uh, much more than that. Uh, that is a powerful power plant, and uh, it's a quick restart time and stuff. So I would keep the JS300 on there. Four coolers. There are two polar coolers on there, military grade B. I'm going to switch those out for the tried and true ultra flows, giving our cooling about, it's about a third uh, um, of our meter here, and that's exactly what I want to see, that or lower. And then the quantum drive comes with a rush, which uh, it, it's it's fairly quick, but it won't go from PO to Microtech, and it's a grade C, so it's a little bit slow. So I throw an Atlas on there very fast, um, as f not speed wise. I mean, it's okay, uh, but it's faster to spool up, and spool down, um, and it, you can make a jump from PO to Microtech with an Atlas. So that is the loadout for the Drake Buccaneer. Um, let's see how much it costs to do this upgrade. Um, go into our cart and there we go. We're looking at 138,910 alpha UVC. So really cheap to upgrade. The ship itself is pretty darn cheap. All in all, you can have a great time with the Drake Buccaneer. It's a cool little ship. Um, if you want to do like light dogfighter gameplay and take on some of those combat missions, uh, it's really fun. Great little ship. <laughs> I've liked that ship for a long time. So with that, let's move on into there is a, uh, I guess you could call it a commercial <laughs> uh, start for, for the Drake Buccaneer because Star Citizen kind of kind of did that. And it's, it's you know, you're going to have to really, I guess, see for yourself uh, because it's a little bit different. Um, stay tuned because after that, we'll do the third person chase camera dogfighting.
All right, folks. So it is time to uh, make our landing here at Port Olisar. I want to thank everybody for watching the video, and uh, I really appreciate your uh, your support. And uh, uh, remind everybody if you if I've earned your your like on this video, please like it and and subscribe. Hit that little red subscribe button. It helps out our channel immensely as we're on our push to get to uh, 500 sub subs right now. But really, to hit a thousand is our goal. Um, if you like the content from Fristing Job, please check the playlist. We got a ton of videos out there, and uh, uh, I think a lot of people enjoy our content, and th they're like, oh, you did this video, and they didn't know that we did that kind of stuff. So uh, we also have uh, a merchandise store if you're interested in buying like a t-shirt or something like that. Uh, check out our website, fistingjava.org. Please come on into the Discord. We'd love to hang out and talk with people and chat. That guy is always interrupting. And uh, we'd love to talk with you guys and hang out and do different stuff. If you're interested in joining our org and uh, getting in some videos, I, I like to enlist uh, people that enjoy our content or maybe join our org or just whoever and come in and help me make a video. You know, be part of the cast. Um, we also have a Patreon if you're interested in actually supporting the channel so we can pay our bills because none of this is free. <laughs> it's free to you. It's not free to us. But that's okay because uh, we like doing it. So, But if you're interested in that, head on over to the website, fistingjama.org, and there is a link to our Patreon there. Um, three bucks, five bucks, ten bucks. And you do get special perks inside the Discord. You get early access to videos and some first looks and some behind the scenes. And there is some exclusive Patreon content. And there's going to be more to come once we get some more patrons. So uh, for java sparky this is fist 25 signing off thank you for watching the video and good night stanton